Okay, ready to talk about some great art today. Let's do it. <laughs> Welcome everybody to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski. And today we're going to look at some paintings by some of my favorite artists. People just like you who've been painting along with me for the past couple of months. So, um... This is probably one of the most exciting times for me personally because it's, a, it's an opportunity just to kind of reflect on the achievements of the, the viewers, the people who have been supporting me for, for so long, who've been painting along with me, who've been uploading photographs, who've been commenting on my paintings, other people's paintings who've been sending donations, which I super appreciate, who've been liking and sharing the video, subscribing, all that kind of stuff. So I'm super, super touched by the, the amount of, this, the, the, of work that you guys have created and the community that's formed. I think for me, that's the big kind of ultimate takeaway from all of this, is that we've created a community of artists. Um, my wife, who's in social media, that's, that's, that's her job, She's always just like, wow, that is so cool how this has been created organically. Um, all these people who uh, have just really decided to really get into painting. And, um, and just, I'm just happy to be a part of it, just helping to facilitate this incredible um, um, little movement that we've created. Anyway, enough hand moving. Let's kind of get into things here. Um, I, I like, I'm, I'm very... Uh, prone to gesticulating with my hands here. So maybe the first thing just before we jump to uh, go into into details here is that there is this Facebook page, which I should, let's just refresh here. Oh, that is a few things. Okay. So, uh, okay. We, this uh, private Facebook group, if this is the first time you've seen me, you have no idea what's going on. This is the, the private group where people who are taking the class or classes, because I'm technically doing two different ones, although one is sort of gobbling the other because um, uh, I just I have so many favorite artists that I want to make paintings of. Um, okay, so anyway, I, there's a link to that. You wanted to um, uh, join the group and upload the paintings that you make to it, and then we can talk about your work as well. So, where should we begin? I think we should just go right back to the very beginning. So now, remember, we did a whole 45 episode long intro to painting course. And that began on September 15th, 2020. And then we painted all the way up until the late January. And that... Um, uh, those, so those 45 episodes, they're all free, and you can watch them at your heart's content and paint along with them. In fact, you know what? I, I was wondering how I would incorporate this now, since we're right here. Why don't we take a look at the artwork that people who have just joined us, how they have been progressing in, in the course? Because uh, I think it's really cool to see how this you know the class is no longer live they're all been recorded and they're there on on youtube for people to watch and every day people are joining and they're painting along so let's take a look at some of those these uh um, new recruits that we've we've gathered here so um and i because i've talked about all of these works and the works that you guys have made at length in the past I'm not going to labor over them. I think we'll just kind of look at them relatively quickly. But I think it is kind of fun just to kind of, especially for those of you who've been painting along with me since September, to, to have a kind of like, oh, yeah, I remember painting that. And to kind of think about where you were in your own progression at this point in the process. So here's Eleanor's paintings. And they're a little bit mixed up as I've got, so they're not in the, in the actual sequential order that we painted these. But... Uh, um, so this is the Goodwin painting, the, the portrait. This looks great. It looks like um, all of Eleanor's paintings were done in a sketchbook. So, and I think this is the sketchbook I recommend in my drawing class because it looks like it's held up pretty well to the paint. 
beautiful image. This looks really great. I love all the texture in the face, and you, it looks like you got the drips, which is impressive trying to do that in your sketchbook, because if uh, you get a little too many drips, it goes onto all the other pages below and creates a bit of a mess. So I'm amazed at how well you were able to pull that off. Uh, this is the Berta Morisot painting, uh, the flowers, this looks great, I loved this one. This one was, I think, one of the, the first ones where I was like, oh, we could really do something, we could go further with this whole class than I expected before, just in terms of using more advanced techniques, and I kind of, maybe just myself as a teacher started thinking like, huh, I guess I could teach some of these more advanced techniques and as beginner painters, we could probably keep up, right? The Alex Katz painting here. That's great. Look at that. This looks, it's amazing. It almost looks like you were painting with gouache, Eleanor. It's really interesting the way that how flat and solid these colors are, especially if you're painting on paper, I would expect them to wrinkle. Beautiful. Keep herring. Mary Cassatt, wow, and then Charles Birchfield. I've, I've said it a few times, this is one of my favorite paintings. I mean, I love all of them, but this is one of my favorite paintings. And I only think about four or five people actually went along and painted this painting. Maybe it's because other people don't like it or not, or whatever was happening at the time in November or something or of last year. But if you're looking for a painting to get into, I would suggest this one. I, I personally think, I've also mentioned before, I think when I when I did this painting myself in the class, it was another one of those moments. I was like, wow, okay. This is really exciting for me personally um, to be able to pull something like this off in a few hours. So anyway, I, that, that was where I really started to get really, really into more into the course because we started doing more paintings that I had never done before versus a lot of the paintings we had done up until that point, I have done in some form or another. So this was me kind of walking a little bit out onto the limb and I'm like, oh, we can do this. Okay, let's take a few more chances. <laughs> Which brings us to, to where we are today with the master study because those are all paintings that I've never painted before. They're just things that I've always loved. And the chrysophily, my goodness, that looks beautiful. Again, I love that you included the, the, the writing on here. That looks like you also, it's like done with a pen, which makes it nice and clean, right? And then Eleanor, I think, also wrote about how, how helpful it was to do the color wheel. So especially for those of you who are joining us, you know, kind of new to the, to the class and kind of jumped in right into the master study, Going back and doing the the color wheel, I think it's been really important and really helpful. I, I saw in some of the comments on this particular photo, some of those of you that are in the master study right now who have done this entire thing saying, yeah, that was like really, really one of the most helpful things because it, it, it really helps you understand how the colors mix together. And our David Hockney, I loved this one. This looks great. You really got the bellies well, right? Mine, mine over here, this dog turned out, I think, less well than I had hoped. But otherwise, everything turned out great. Good job. Okay, this is... There you go. Uh, the Emily Carr, that's turned out great. Yeah. That would be one of the paintings for me personally that I, the version I did, I would like to redo again. Um, but they can't always be absolute perfect masterpieces, right? There's always some ups and downs. This looks fantastic. I love the purple shadow. Fantastic. Great job. Ah, the Hilma Af Clint. Beautiful. I like that purple a lot. I think that was more purple than we went, but it turned out really well for this painting. And the other, the um, Hilma Af Klimt painting. And then the Mary Pratt turned out great. Wow. And then the Matisse. I love this blue background that you've got here for the Matisse. It really makes this picture pop. I was making me think about when I saw, when I was organizing these images today, how fun it would be if I had all the, all the means to have a different color on the table every time we're painting that kind of matched, like almost like a frame for, for the paintings. 
Um, one, one other thing to put on my list of things to do. <laughs> right. Um, and then the Molly Lamb bow bag that um, Eleanor did here. That's fantastic. I, I love this. It looks like you put in a lot more detail, too, in some of these figures in the foreground in particular. And these kites are fantastic. That's great. Wow. And here's Eleanor's Mirandi painting. That is gorgeous. Look at the colors and the detail in your flowers. I think this is more true to, not life, but true to the original than my own. So that's, this is, wow, really good. And then one of the very first ones in that set was the Sonia Delaunay. And the Van Gogh, wow. <laughs> I like that you're putting these paintings on these different textured surfaces. Like this texture of this blanket here has a very Van Gogh-like quality. That is, it's actually kind of funny and really smart to be honest that's really cool and then here's the lauren harris painting beautiful oh you know what i like here is you've got this background this is probably your first wash and then you've cut it out with these with this white shape on top here interesting i like that that turned out really cool Okay, well done, Eleanor. Thank you for, for joining us. And I, I love that you're going and doing all those original paintings and you had the courage to share them with us. I really appreciate that. I think we may have looked at this one before. There is, might be a little bit of an overlap here. Gemini's version of Murakami. And then this one here, uh, version of the Vermeer. But this is like the psychedelic pop version of here with these you know um, radiating lines coming from her head and the colors are a little bit more saturated I, I love I, you're gonna see a number of people who have taken the original painting and then given it a little bit of a twist and this is I think was really fun that was a really smart fun I, a way of doing it and the, the, the face blah blah spit it out the face turned out really well as good as well I think maybe the chin seems to be a little bit overly prominent. I might just dial this highlight down just a bit, like, because it's a little bit white, maybe, but, and I can't remember what the original looks like, but it does seem like it's a little bit Jay Leno-like, <laughs> but otherwise it's really fantastic. And then we've got a bunch here from Josh, another one of our new uh, recruits, I guess. So here's the tomato soup can from uh, Andy Warhol that we did. That is really nice. Great job. That one was actually quite tough to do all the this outlining and detailing, so you did a great job. And then I think there was a few, I think this is the, oh, this is a different one. Here's the onion soup. Cool. I think there was a few here that I think I saw that you had printed out and then pasted onto canvas and painted. I like this. This is a, a Warhol self-portrait. And then here is another, these look like very small canvases, like little tiny things. So that is very cool to see these on there. Wow, nice, I like these. These little tiny paintings feel like the perfect kind of things to make and give to people as gifts, right? Like, can you imagine receiving a little tiny painting like that from a good friend? Um, you know, especially now where we're not, we're not really supposed to be gathering in large groups and we're not able to celebrate that way you know making a little artwork and just dropping it off putting it in somebody's mailbox that you haven't seen in a while that would be a really kind of special little gift so this is a great I, some really great ideas here josh and this is cool i like this looks like a little a little mat or a frame around this tiny painting of the banana that's cool oh and then here you've got the oh look at how small this is wow Good job for painting something so small, a tiny little canvas, a couple inches. Ah, nice, another banana. Beautiful. And then I think this is one Josh did for the Bob Ross. I think you changed the composition, obviously. Um, so we've got like a path going through here as opposed to the water coming right up to the front. Really beautiful. I like this radiating sun coming through here. And the Molly Lambeau back. Wow. Like, that feels great. I love... This feels like a lot of energy. 
this reminds me just the way that you've got the people coming right up to the top. Maybe there was more that got cut out of the photograph. But this makes me almost think like we're in a in a drone, like you know those little flying helicopter drones with cameras on them. There, uh, that it's almost like flying and approaching the crowd, about to fly over them as well, like like a, another kite, maybe like the the kite's eye view, if you if you will. Wait, if you will. Very cool. I like this. Some great paintings in there, Josh. And we'll see your paintings later on when we get to some of the other artworks here, but. Great to see some of those early artworks um, included in here. So here's uh, Lori's version. So now here, again, this is from, I think, our very first couple classes here. And I, I remember some of the, yeah, again, some of the comments on this one as well. People were, who've, you know, this, for some of them, this was many, many months ago that we did that, uh, who were very excited and uh, found, again, these exercises were really helpful. Now, I don't, no. Yeah, it does look... Okay, I was going to say, it looks like it gets darker around the edges of the Sonia Delaunay painting, and I was wondering if that was the camera, but it does actually appear that you've um, blended some colors. Oops, what, where did we go? Looks like you've blended some colors uh, to so that we have the, the more intense colors or brighter colors towards the center. And then as we move outward towards the edge of the canvas, it looks like canvas paper maybe, um, it gets darker and darker to give it that um, vignette kind of quality. Very cool, I like that. Really nice job. And here's another one by Laurie here, the Berta Morisot. Gorgeous, really nice. I love these dark browns that you've got going on in there. Really nice job. Cool. And then here's another one by Lori. This is uh, the uh, Gustav Klimt. Beautiful. Wow. I wonder, is this watercolor, maybe watercolor pencil, perhaps? I'm not sure what material was used to create that, but it looks really nice. The subtleties of the skin, you know, blending, really beautiful. Um, really, really nice. Okay. Let's move on here to Molly's, Molly Taylor. Wow, look at that. Look how sharp these lines are. That is gorgeous. That is definitely one of the most impressive versions I've seen thus far of the um, Hokusai painting, uh, The Great Wave. Very nice. I love the way that you've outlined things here. Those kind of tentacles really really cool yeah um, yeah this is really this is a really really nice one way to go Molly okay and uh, wow Patricia so we have another another this is another one of our brand new recruits here uh, and this is why every time I always I can never remember um, well, I've got Maud Lewis. That's why I don't know why Maud Lewis. I, her name is always escapes me. Anyway, beautiful job here. Obviously, we got a bit of the I think your shadow cast on here, so it's making it a little bit darker. But um, you know, you've got all every all the things in here. The trees are fantastically well done, especially these trees in the foreground. I love these little marks that you've put into the trees to give them a little bit of extra texture very nice very well done i like that one a lot really great job and here's another one by patricia wow good job this i love the swirling sky here one thing i would say is it does look like this tree in the foreground kind of splits the composition a little bit and i think what we want to see is this kind of swirl carry over in behind that shape I mean small detail but it's just again same sort of thing right here because this kind of dips down so I think we want to just kind of just connect that in some way in the same way that like it's connecting really well here on the top we just want to kind of join that up but tiny small detail but 
overall, I mean, just the way it's painted is fantastic. Well done. And the Matisse, beautiful, great. I love how you did the fish in here. And really well done. Nice outlining up there. Great job. And then we have, San whoops, let's see, Sandra's. Sandra Pandra. Fantastic. This, when I saw this, I was putting together, I was like, wow, this, the way that you've done the, um, the, this kind of with the grass is it's not really Emily Carr ish. Um, it reminds me a lot more of Renoir, an artist that is coming up on the in the master class. But uh, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it's actually perhaps might suit this painting more than Emily Carr's original. So I think this looks really nice, like really. These really soft, I, like I wonder how you did this. It feels almost like, like these little circular brush strokes. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it's done, but there's a a tactile. You know, it feels it's like when you walk around through a department store and you want to touch the pillows and stuff. That's the way I want to touch this painting. Um, okay, and then here's another one by Sandra. Fantastic, great job. I love the watermelon particularly. I like this really bright magenta pink. It looks like really pop. Um, and the Miro, that's great. Wow, these are fantastic. Oh, here's Sandra's studio setup. It's always interesting to me to see where you guys are painting and, and what kind of setup you have to help you you know, some people have, you know, great big studios and have all sorts of materials. And then there's some other people that are painting in very small environments. And what I think is great about the format of the paintings we're making, these 9x12s or 8x11s or whatever size you're using, but they're kind of small enough that we can get a painting done in a reasonable amount of time. And they don't take up too much room. Like, I always like showing that all of my art supplies can fit inside of a shoebox, right? Great job. Thanks for sharing this, Sandra. I appreciate this. Oh, and then this looks like, oh, this is, this is your Van Gogh painting. Cool. Wow. I like all the, what's interesting about this shape in the foreground is how dark it is. You've, d you've made a decision to lighten the, um, the middle ground out here, this, the hill. Um, so it makes it, it turns it into a bit of a different time of day. So rather than nighttime, it's like daytime with a very bright sky shining and illuminating, so this becomes a silhouette form. Really cool. It, it just kind of shifting that whole painting around. And then here's I think Charmé. What's the difference? I think this is the is step one, and then she's gone back and added a little bit more detail to it, which I think works really really well. Fantastic job. I like the sky great sun you know one of the things in this video we talked about how one of the mistakes people make is they make that the sun really 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 bright and yeah it looks like actually you've actually even darkened around here a little bit but you know what we we also talked during that episode how if we make this painting black and white that the sun kind of just disappears into the clouds or into the mist or fog or whatever this this is um so one of the i think and i've read elsewhere as people talk about the brilliance of this painting is that it the sun is not overly bright and it's kind of more like the way that we would see it in this particular scenario very cool great job thank you very much everyone those uh are 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 great uh it's great to see all the, the work by our our new recruit I, I don't know why i say recruits i don't like that word recruits but new um hmm think about it as i probably dribble coffee down my t-shirt here but it's good because i'm wearing a a dirty t-shirt or my painting t-shirt it's not it's clean but i don't mind if it gets dirty sorry i was starving to death right before <laughs> so i'm hydrating and um 
solidi- hydrating and solidifying? What would be the... Anyway, so here's uh, the original Owl Loving cube that we did back in... I'm not sure when we did this, back in or late January. And then, so let's look at your versions of this. So here's Anne's painting. Very cool, great job. I love these nice sharp edges. Looks like you're using the tape like we, we showed. Great job. And the, the white that you've done, you've done an admirable jo job of, of outlining this. You know, th th that was one of the more difficult things to do because, you know, by using the tape on the outside edges, we create a really sharp, perfect line. I mean, if you do it perfectly well, then you get a perfect, really sharp line. So one of the, the which is great, but the, 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 um, the maybe pitfall of using that technique is it can make any other lines that aren't super, super sharp kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, so it, it kind of makes the handmade aspects of the painting um, look uh, more handmade than they might otherwise be if we had also painted the the outside lines without just by hand as well. Great job. I love the background. I like these vertical lines, uh, like very subtle grays, um, a little bit darker shades in there. Cool. And then here's Deborah's painting. Um, you know what's funny? is I think I think it's supposed to be up way like this so that we have this shape on the top it was just the way that you sent it and uploaded it was like this which definitely makes the optical illusion aspect of this painting stronger because now technically we're seeing the bottom of the cube right so we're it's sort of like it's floating above us and we this here is the bottom but because of the colors that Al Loving chose, it almost pushes it inward, if that makes any sense. So that we're looking at like the corner of a room, like this being the carpet and a wall and a wall, and this being the far corner of the room, which then turns all the rest of the stuff. It's a little bit of a mind boggler, isn't it? Very cool. And so how did I, what did I do? How did I jump over this? Okay, so here's another Deborah. So Deborah did two of these. Interesting. Okay. So here's this one on the blue background. What a difference, hey, B between the blue background and this kind of much more muted gray. Hard to say which one I, I like better. The, the blue is definitely gives it a lot more life, right? It's, it's really interesting just how juxtaposing that different color, but it does work really well with the this lime green almost makes this green look more fluorescent than ever right and here's Dolores's version great job nice sharp sharp lines on the outside here great grays oh interesting here and Gemini has taken it and given us a shadow so what's the difference between these two okay it looks like this is an earlier version and then they've gone in and kind of cleaned up these lines a little bit. Either one is fine, but definitely, you know, it takes a little bit more. Oh, and then here's another version where you've outlined it. Interesting. The outline works really well, too. I mean, I'd be happy with any of them, but... Interesting. I haven't seen anybody outline it like that before. Is that how the original one is? Nope. That's cool. I, I like that. That's, that's a very interesting uh, approach there. I guess maybe you did that to help clean up the and make it look a little bit tighter. Maybe it's done with a Sharpie and then a ruler or something. I'm not sure. Okay, and then here's Heidi. Heidi's also got two. Oh, how, here's Heidi's one of them. And here's another one. Is this the same one? It just widened those lines? Yes. Interesting. Okay, so here's the first version and we and these lines are kind of thin and then here's the beefed up version huh interesting how that turned out you've done a fantastic job because the only way i can tell it's the same thing is this little area up here 
I don't know which one I like better. Hi, yeah, yeah, where am I? Hmm. That one or this one? That one or this one? <laughs> I don't know. It, it is really cool to see it, this as a, in a different format. Huh. Very cool. Okay, and then here's Lori's version. I like also, it looks like you've, again, darkened this very subtly here on the bottom to give it a little bit of a shadow, similar to how Gemini did theirs as well here with this darker side here. But yours is obviously way more subtle. This might maybe was done afterwards to clean up maybe a little bit of a, uh, a leakage from the tape. Great. And then here we've got three from Peter. Okay, Peter. Well done. Um, now to dis discern the difference between these three. Oh, let me see. Hmm. Oh, looks like was this one done entirely with tape, perhaps? And this one. This one looks like maybe. Okay, this is our third one. This one looks like it was done like the way I did it, with just tape on the outside and then hand painted inside. This one looks like it could have been entirely hand painted. And then this one looks like all of the lines were done with tape. Very cool. I, I imagine this one took the longest to do. It's interesting to see how it kind of we get these little overlaps in the corners. Now, um, that's really exciting. I love that you you used three different approaches to create this one painting. Um, so we have the three different versions. I mean, I, they all look great. And really, I don't think most people would immediately notice the difference. So, but as an artist, you know, we're always trying to figure out, like, what is the best way for me to really do this and pull it off? Here's Richard's version of the painting. Again, it looks like it's a little, it's on its side. I think that would be technically the right side up, but this is the way that you sent it. So, I, I mean, again, it, it does make it, all of a sudden, when you turn this picture onto its side, it makes it look kind of strange, and it, it causes that optical illusion discomfort in the brain thing to happen, as opposed to being up like that. Very cool. Okay. And here's Shelley's version. Great. One small thing I noticed, and this again is kind of creates even more of an optical illusion, is it looks like this bottom, or at least right here, we want it to, I think the, the corner should be maybe out here, so that this line should kind of come down to here which it, it doesn't, like you can kind of see the inside shapes are, are quote unquote correct. But what it does do again is create a bit more of a weird optical illusion where our mind kind of struggles to kind of put it back together and to make sense of it, which I, I don't mind. I always think those kind of things are, because you have to imagine if somebody's walking through an art gallery or museum, how do you catch that person's attention? And often it's because there's something quote unquote wrong about a painting that causes us to, to like, what? And artists do that deliberately, right? They, they do, and I, I mean, to adding something that causes people to do a little bit of a double take or to look a little bit closer. That I, I mean, I could write an entire book about all the different instances throughout art history where artists have done little quirky things to cause us to want to look a little bit longer and closer at things. And they're also in it, it yeah, how, you know, the, an example of that would be like an Easter egg in a, a movie, as they would call it. Like, if you've heard of people say, oh, there's, look at all the Easter eggs in the new Superman movie or whatever. And it's like little, little things for people who are paying a little bit more attention, little rewards, like an Easter egg, finding an Easter egg, you know, when you remember going on an Easter egg hunt. Very cool. Great job, everyone. Okay. So we're just at artist number one here. I'm going to try to...
speed things up. Now, the one, one thing, if you're like, oh my goodness, it's taken us a while to get through the first artist, you'll see that uh, the first maybe um, 10 or 12 paintings that we did as a group, the first group of them, we have a lot of submissions, and then as we go, there become fewer and fewer of them, which is not surprising that this happened throughout the, the, the last class, because often people are still painting them, right? I often hear in the chat, like, oh, I'm still working on this and that painting while we're doing, while you're teaching this painting. So I expect that over time, those numbers for some of these, the more recent paints that we did will also climb as people finish them. Okay, so here's our Amanda Gorman painting. So here, just as a kind of quick reference, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be showing the originals because then people, I don't want us to be comparing to the original. Um, but I will say like my own version of this painting looked very little <laughs> like the actual photograph, like the actual um, subject, Amanda Gorman, which, you know, I've mentioned before, Personally, that doesn't bother me. I'm not really someone who's obsessed with capturing a likeness and making things look quote unquote realistic. Um, there are lots of other YouTubers out there who, who uh, whose whole focus is like hyper realistic painting and drawing. That's never something that's been much of an interest to me. I'm more interested to see how we can learn uh, to paint to express ourselves rather than just a copy nature. Um, so let's go here. Here's Charmé's version. Ooh, I like this a lot. Really nice. Um, what would I say? I think one, it does look like this chin line is maybe, a, or jaw line is a little bit high. Like I feel like it should be a little bit lower. But I mean, or or maybe this line would cut in a little bit more. Either way, I think this is a fantastic painting. I also really like that you added the color on her her dress um, or her top, which I didn't do. I think I, I left mine blank. <laughs> now that I'm looking just here in the margins, it looks like almost everyone put, put something there. I was maybe the only one who didn't. Uh, great, I, this, you know, Really nice, subtle uses of browns in here. So we've got some of these darker ones. I love this dark edge, which is often, you know, when we're painting shadows, there is the 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 highlight, and then we come up where there's the where the, how, how does the 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 core shadow is often not quite as dark as the edge between the light and the dark. Usually there is like, because often the core shadow has some reflected light in here. So this, to me, I see this reflected light here on this other side of the face, which is great. Really beautiful job. Here's Susan's version. Wow, nice. Again, I love that you decorated the clothing as well. These, the hair is nice and solid and Almost has like, especially here, a bit of a poofy quality here. This little bit of darkness and, and the brightness in there works really, really well. I think we want a little bit more um, softer transition between these two, the, the light and the dark underneath the chin, just to kind of, because they look a little bit um, like one shape sitting on the other, where of course they're, they're one, you know, the skin ties them all together, but small small problem not a, not even a problem just um something to kind of think about as we go forward all right really beautiful job i love these highlights on the face what's really nice is how you've turned them into these r nice shapes like these uh ovoid forms here really nice really cool like so it feels very flowing i like that and then Shelly's. Okay, so here, I think there's two here from Shelly. So I think this this is the first one. And then she went back and, and added more to it. I think I was reading a comment. Something about there was the, the forehead was a little dark in this version. And also in the nose. 
and came back and brightened it up, which I think works really well. Really nice work here in the face and trying to, to get this shadow. And we've got, again, a little bit of reflected shadow on here. Really nice. That's beautiful. It has a kind of an impressionist quality here. So lots of work that you put into this painting and it paid off really, really well. And then here's Sharon's version of the painting. Very cool. Again, we've got a little bit of this reflected shadow on this side. And as we expected on the cheek, it's a little bit darker right up here. Love this. This almost like a Maude Lewis painting on her, her clothing here, which is really fantastic. Great use of these. There's lots of different darks in the hair, including almost some purples and pinks and then some much darker areas in here. Great job. Really well done, Sharon. This original, let's go. Here's May's version of it. Wow, cool. Um, it's interesting, this, this uh, gesso mark on in the hair, it's a little bit distracting, but that could also just be the way it was lit when the photograph was taken. It might not be so apparent later on. I would, you know, I would say that the way that you've painted this face is fantastic. I love, because it looks like you've, you're painting kind of thin here, very thin um, with maybe uh, slow dry medium or glazing fluid or acrylic medium mixed in. So we're getting all of these transparencies, which means all these layers are mixing optically in our minds as we look at the painting, in the same way that we've got this purple and the black over top of it really really nice great job uh oh where are we where were we blah, 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 blah. um yeah beautiful beautiful beautifully painted way to go may and here's heidi's version here wow that is cool a really nice job with the again this this is mostly where i've been looking i think your eyes you pulled off the eyes Arguably better than anyone else. There's a lot of life in these eyes. Really well done. Great modeling of those forms coming around in here. Um, if anything, what I would say is you've done, and, and this is something that's very, very common, is often people will spend a long time on the face and then other parts of a painting have, are kind of noticeably less... Um, there's been noticeably less attention paid to, to other parts of the body, which can draw our attention more and more and more to the face. That's why I always say to people, if you've got, if, it's, if whatever it is, whether it's a face you're painting or a dog or it's the tree in the background, is sometimes the best way to fix part of the painting is just to leave it alone. Because sometimes the more that we work on it, the more it draws our attention to it, right? It's sort of like when we're drawing and you keep erasing something and it keeps getting kind of a, a bit of a, a cloud of darker shapes around it. So I feel like the face is fantastic, but now the neck seems to be, to have a lot less attention paid to it. So it kind of almost draws our attention because you see like the difference in, you know, like this shape, we feel the volume going around the face whereas the neck feels a little bit more flat. And I mean, that's just, it, it's, it's a total common thing, but it's just, it's interesting to see that in the painting here. Well done, and the hair is fantastic, by the way. Great job. Wow, cool job, Gail. Love this, love these earrings, the way you painted them, and this clothing, fantastic. It's kind of nice about the, like, the way that you've painted it is, her eyes feel like they're squinting a little bit, looking, this, this feels maybe more than any other, including my own, the most like kind of hopeful version, the kind of version maybe I was trying to paint and try to get that in there. So that is that turned out really, really nice. I like that. And then here's Deborah's. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah, again, nice kind of reflecting reflected shadows in here. Wow, what else can I say? Beautiful clothing. These are great. These are really, really spectacular. And as I as I've, I mentioned all the time, like I know 
I know when you're beginning, trying to make something look like what it originally was, especially when we're painting people's faces, can be all-consuming kind of a worry when you're painting. Um, but I think if you if you're able to let go of of your hold on making it look exactly like the original, your experience of painting is so much. Um, so much uh, uh, more relaxing, I guess, where you just sort of get into it and you're like, okay, whatever. I don't, I don't really care if it looks a lot like the original person or if the apple looks exactly like the original apple. I'm just having fun. And you sort of take a lot of pressure off yourself. Okay, so let's continue down the line here. So this was our um, Alma Thomas painting. Okay, and so here's the original Alma Thomas, and let's start from the top here. Here's, I think this is the first, Deborah did a few of them, so here's the first version. I think she said she did it really quickly. Although I do actually like this, I like the energy, like this feels like it's swirling and moving because it's done fast. You know, when often when we paint quickly, it unconsciously tells the viewer to read it quickly like it, it it there's a we we kind of unconsciously feel the speed at which it was created right so there's a, a feeling of movement in here this one i think it obviously it looks a little bit blurry and i think that's just because of maybe it was a low resolution photo or something but we i think we get <laughs> we get the point it looks great a nice uses mixing of all those colors in there it looks fantastic and then this is Dolores's version. Wow, you did a fantastic job, Dolores. Like this feels like a like a bicycle wheel or something. Like I almost feel like every single one of these, like it feels very well organized. Like I'm not even sure how you organize it like so well because when I did mine, there were some some of these little squares would be a little bit wider or smaller. Especially as you're going around the circle and they match up, like there's you know, sometimes little gaps. So I don't know if you measured this whole thing out or how you did it, but it looks really very, very well organized. And Heidi's version here, beautiful. I love these colors are used here, Heidi. I love these transitions, like you've decided to go from kind of the yellow, orange, darker orange, orange, red, red, and then darker green then going and lightening it up so we really feel this kind of rainbow effect here and the pastels around the outside edges that are you're just adding tinting that color so adding more white to it very effective really nice that that i mean i might like these colors better than alma thomas's but um anyway very cool here's may's version of it really cool kind of very different right very different than this one very light here's much darker excuse me darker colors right creates a different different kind of feeling altogether so it doesn't have kind of the lightness of this this feels um more a little bit heavier i guess in some way and not in a bad way just that the the, the darker colors feel heavier i don't know how to just describe that kind of experience of looking at it but it looks i think it looks great too really well done wow and here's peter's version of it almost is that a smaller canvas i can see your hand in there so it looks like maybe it's a six by eight or something that maybe potentially um beautiful that turned out great look at how nicely spaced everything is in there and then Richard's version, interesting. I like, it looks like you've gone back and painted some gray inside here to clean up the center. Very smart. I like that, good idea, which I wouldn't even have thought of doing something like that, but that works really well. Similarly, is this on paper that you've cut out? Because it almost looks like this out, there's something going on with this outside edge. And I'm sure probably, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm sure you guys have explained all this thoroughly in your comments on the Facebook page 
and I just haven't had a chance to read them, or I read them, and I can't, I read so many hundreds of comments, they all mix together, so, um, but that's really interesting, your approach to this one here, great job, Richard. We got a few more here of the Alma Thomas. Beautiful Shelley's version here. I like these colors. It's, this feels like, maybe this is just the photograph, but it's got a bit more of a yellowish kind of uh, hue. Very nice. What I like here is the the variation of the the brush strokes. Like we have these rectangular kind of chunky rectangular ones, and then we've got these really thin dashes in here. It's almost like Morse code, like, you know, like that's, <laughs> um, and then here's Susan's version, adding a little bit more of a purple flavor in there. I like that. You know, I, one thing I would say that out of all, you know, while we're painting, you know, if it's, it's not a crime to to, you know, when you're looking at the painting, even maybe before we begin thinking to yourself, you know what, I would love to have a little bit, I have this space on my wall and I want something that's a little bit more purpley or green or orange or blue or red or whatever it is. And then thinking about like, okay, maybe I'm going to modify some of the colors of the original painting to kind of skew a little bit closer towards the color scheme that I want. All right, so... Um, you can kind of take a little bit more control over the, of the painting process. Uh, so I think this is great. You know, very interesting. A few of you have done have taken this approach. And here's Charmaine's I think there's a, two of them. I think this one... Yeah, this one just got maybe better lighting, or different lighting anyway. Again, it's different... I don't know, did I do this as well? <laughs> Looks like a number of you... I mean, I, I, mine is is stacked away there, but uh, I won't even bring it out. But really cool, love it, great job, everyone. Okay, let's just continue uh, motoring along here. Um, here is the other Alma Thomas painting that we did. So this one, and I did mine quite quickly too. So this is the original Alma Thomas. And let's. Go to Susan's. Wow, cool. So two. I mean, there are two different compositions that you using the same sort of method for painting these. Um, but I like that. I like this again. A little bit more of a purple quality. Richards. Wow, <laughs> this feels like really well organized. Great. This starts really makes me feel a lot more like bricks, like the way that they're stacked and layered like that. And this, you know, um, really nice, like, uh, separation between each of the brush strokes in this way, right? So again, like, it really feels like bricks in that this is the mortar that runs between each brick. Like, very few of them actually touch and overlap, whereas mine, I started kind of getting a little bit lazy, and they, they're kind of, you know, blending into one another as they go but this looks really nice and and well organized looks like you took your time when you painted it and it paid off great job wow and here's peter's great peter uh, look, it looks like everyone is <laughs> a lot more patient with this painting than i was that's really funny uh great great job here peter And then May. Oh, cool. Wow. You know what's interesting? So remember I was just talking about how I was lazy and my brush strokes kind of layered. It looks to me like May went back with more paint and cleaned up this painting by painting the, the lines in between. Wow. That is great. That makes me really excited because you... It, kind of maybe painted it and felt like maybe it needs to be cleaned up and, and made a little bit some of the, some of these layers of paint bumping right up to one another um, aren't you know in the same same feeling as the original so you you took the time which this might have taken you longer than painting all these colors to, to do that really well done that I'm really proud of you for doing that really 
Let's look at here, Heidi's version. Okay, I think there's, what's the difference? We got two, oh, those looks like the same. Um, beautiful. Obviously the, the, the paint strokes are much closer to one another, but still keeping really nice and, and clean quality. Here's Eleanor, so kind of quite, you know, very different. Like, so here, the, they're almost right up bunching together. And then Eleanor kept much more space in between. Wow. That, that actually looks really nice. So this now reminds me more of, like, tiles. Like, you know, kitchen or bathroom tiles. More so than even, like, so, you know, Richard's here... I felt like, I guess this looks also tile-like, but because of the shapes, more rectangular shapes, reminded me more of um, bricks. Also because of the way that you almost staggered them, Richard, whereas Eleanor's here, the way that there's, some of them line up. I mean, I, I don't mean any of this positively or negatively. It's just really super interesting for me to see that. And here's Deborah's. I think, oh, where did Deborah's? So right now... I think this is technically how it, how the original likes, but this is how you sent it. So it's kind of now we've got this inverted shape here, which it's funny how it kind of loses its form, and now we it becomes a bit more of a negative shape, and then it brings out these other. So this one looks it makes it look more abstract, versus let's say, you know, here. It has more, I mean, both of them, are, they're all abstract, but this one becomes more, where is it? Deborah's here, this becomes more non-representational versus kind of like a, like a mountain or I think Alma Thomas, as she's talking about this, is being kind of like the exhaust from a rocket as it's taking off. It's called blast off, right? So it, I think it looks like, you know, maybe the t bottom of the rocket is like flying away. And this is the fire coming out of the bottom. And then lastly, I wanted to show you guys this here. This is Lori's took the same painting and kind of used a different approach. So here's a photograph that they had and then took that same photograph and turned it into an Alma Thomas painting. So it's like a fire. Now, maybe this is what's interesting seeing these is Maybe that's how Alma Thomas created her painting, is that she was working from a photograph just like this, kind of drew it out, but but in the act of painting it, it just sort of lost its original shape and meaning, and it becomes like a much more abstract image. Very cool. I really like that you did that, Lori. Great job. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. So this is our the Mars Perseverance rover um, painting we did. This was the original. So now of course this is a this is the image that I posted, which is a digital illustration because it hadn't landed on the surface yet. And so I took this one and then I added the little um, the the drone into the image. And so let's where should we start? Let's start where the first one we saw. So here's um, is it Paula? I can't remember. My apologies. Um, because I think Ace is your partner's name, right? If I recall. So I always get that mixed up. But anyway, this one is done. Looks like watercolor and pen. Um, really beautiful. I one of the things, you know, what's really nice about this is how you've left this white around the form here. Most people feel very compelled to paint, paint right up to paint and to leave no white space around there. Or they, they, they want to do that, but they don't, they're not successful. And then we have little bits of white left there unintentionally, and it can look a little bit sloppy. Here you've gone and deliberately left. I think because I I paint a little bit like that um, on my own artwork, and it takes like it is. It's surprisingly hard to allow yourself to to leave these white spots. 
Um, I think it looks super effective in this image, but it's, I, I would, you know, challenging anybody else going forward is leaving little bits of, of the white background or any other color showing through. Maybe that's I don't know, one of our next paintings. I'll think about using that approach. And you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to do. Great job. Here's Deborah's version. It looks great. I love it. I would say the way that I painted the background for this painting, this is another painting where um, I probably, I, I think I glazed the background, which was, might not have been the most, the smartest way to, to make the background. But I was just, I'm also experimenting. It's like, well, we've never done, maybe there's a reason why people don't glaze backgrounds. But, uh, um, so this, but anyway, your painting's really nice. I love all these purples in here. Great job with the rocks. Beautiful. And here's May's version. Wow, cool. Very nice. I like how, you know, this shape just becomes kind of abstract, and yet we still have an idea that there's a, like a robotic quality to it. And one of the things I, I really appreciate and we'll see in some other people's paintings is how this drone starts to look like some kind of um, like Chinese or Japanese like um, cal calligraphy kind of so it looks like a, a letter form beautiful I love these purples in here great job this is Molly's version I like that a lot a lot of attention to the detail on here beautiful Little red over here, great. Ooh, I like how you've done this. These curving details inside those wheels, nice. Original. And here's Shelley's version. Nice again. A little bit softer, less rocky of a ground, but I love the the background here. The this this feels like we really sense the like a different type of atmosphere as opposed to the like here on earth where we have these kind of horizontal striations potentially with the light who knows really how the atmosphere is like on mars and so this one's kind of got a diagonal vertical quality which is you know like the original um but it feels more pronounced here but i, I actually really like that i, I might even prefer it um, and then here's Charmaine. See what I was saying here? This this looks a lot more like a calligraphic, calligraphic, calligraphic uh, <laughs> mark making here. That's really cool. Yeah, beautiful. These are great. I really like this. This looks good. I was not super happy with my own. I really feel like these are more successful than my own paintings here. Great job. Um. Jeanette Lafortune says, these are terrific. Good work. Thank you very much. Be, uh, I'm not sure if Jeanette, if you've been painting along with us, it'd be great to see your the artwork that you, got, that you make along with us. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, maybe the base. Uh, is, I, I know a number of people who, who whose Facebook names are different than their real names, so I always get a little confused. And, most of my students uh, that I teach at the university have like lots of different <laughs> names. <laughs> like the, the 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 sheet that I get at the beginning of the year that has like people's names versus the way the names people want to be called in class are always like so different that I it's basically like double the amount of names I've got to learn. I got the people's so-called real names and then the names that they decide to call themselves, which are you know contractions of their names or totally different names nicknames and often the names change throughout the semester so I've got not only your guys's names but like another hundred names from my students at school um, okay so here's the original this is the volcano in Hawaii that was erupting um, at the time we made this painting for the paint the news which which by the way the, the paint the news is um, on a slight hiatus, just because of some of the things that I want to accomplish over the next month, but then over the over after May, we will kind of return back to the 
previous schedule as I as I wanted it to be. Just um, I want to spend most of me talking and looking at art by artists from China, Vietnam, the Philippines, Japan, etc. Um, because there's so much great art that we really haven't spoken and talked about. We've, we've looked at a couple of Japanese artists, uh, Hokuzai Murakami in our painting class, but especially with some of the things that have been going on in the world lately, um, I wanted to kind of give an extra bit of focus towards the incredible artists from that part of the world that, um, that I think most more people should be in love with that I love. <laughs> okay, so let's look at, here's Charmé's version of this um, this painting. Great, I, th I mean, it looks like we're, there's just a lot of light the way that was photographed. But I can see right, I can see the painting itself. It's really well, I love this kind of the clouds that you've got going on on, on this side here. It's all very fluffy, beautiful, nice explosion. Great job, Charmé. It was nice and warm, good kind of lava leaking down there. That would turn out really, really well. And then here's Vanya's version. Ah, that is great. Who does this remind me of? The way that you painted it reminds me of... That's going to drive me nuts. Who does that remind me of? It's going to... Maybe I'll come back to it, but... There's just the, the way that you've applied the paint. I don't know if it's like William Blake or somebody along that lines, but there, it's, it has like a very British kind of application of paint in here. Really nice. I, I love the, we have some, like there's, obviously there's the, our initial colors underneath and then layering, but we still see the colors showing through some of these darker areas, which I always find really satisfying, you know, like, the way that we've been painting many of the paintings we've done so far is is not is rather than having super solid thick um, uh, flat colors as, as they're often called we have we we're allowing some of the texture to come through those colors and it just creates more dynamic shadows and silhouettes so really really nice great job and here's Susan's version of it. Wow. I like, so we've got these kind of the, the pinks coming through, um, which I, I think it looks great. One thing I would say though, is it might help just to give a little bit of more color over some of these pinks, maybe a little bit of red or, um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I do love this sky. That is gorgeous. I love this bright red here. Really nice. The the lava spewing out and spraying. Really nice with the, the, the central white, blazing hot white there. Great job. Okay, we're going up this way. Whoa! Here's Shelly's version. Wow, that is great. This is kind of different take on, on it than I did. And anyone else I've seen so far, I, again, so this is the same sort of thing. Like we see a lot of the texture of the previous layers of colors coming through. And so it just, it feels like this mountain is alive, that it's glowing from within, right? I, I think this is more successful in that respect than my own painting. Um, and it's, I really feel your style coming through here. Absolutely, really well done. And beautiful spray of the lava. A lot more nuanced and textured than mine. Great job. This starts to feel more like, almost like for me, like veins, right? Like, uh, like in a in, in in somebody's body, right? And it's just like tearing apart, like it's like the skin is stretching open. Wow, that's in, there's, this. There's a um, a lot of energy and movement in this painting. And here's Molly's version. Great job, Molly. Love the sky here. So you, you, I mean, you've painted this down here a lot more like I did, um, which you know, <laughs> which is great. You did a lot like how I did. <laughs> um, but this, yeah, it's fantastic. I like this. I really, not, I actually also the the way that you've done inside here is also really nice. 
Very cool. Let's make sure. Okay, May's version. Great job, May. Really nice. Great sky. One thing I would say is you could even have a little bit more of the, oops, the spray kind of coming out. Because right now it's, it's all very contained. And I think it would be nice to also see a few more little dabs of white and red and yellow kind of coming off of the main form, right? Kind of shooting downwards. But great colors, great job. Really, really nice. And Irene's, wow. Different, totally different format. So you've rotated the canvas into a portrait format. And which also, in a way, really accentuates the vertical explosion of the volcano. So that's... That is really interesting. I didn't. It didn't even really occur to me to, to to paint it that way, but I could see that being a really. I think if I was to do it again, I, I would be. I could be convinced to to repaint it that way if I was going to. Really nice, yeah, because it feels a lot more explosive, right? Because this is a vertical explosion rather than horizontal. Huh. Interesting. I like that. And also, the speed of these brush strokes. So remember I talked maybe 20 minutes ago about how we can unconsciously experience the speed of those brush strokes when we look at, at a painting. This feels like those brush strokes, by virtue of them done quickly, like there's that movement, right? There's an the explosion coming off there. Okay, and Heidi, wow, look at that. This feels like it's glowing from within, like the walls of the upper part of the volcano, that cone, are getting so hot that they're, the whole thing could just blow at any moment, right? Really nice. Great job. That is really nice, Heidi. Beautiful. That would be really... Pr this is... I mean, you've done a lot of great paintings, but this is pretty close to one, being one of the best. That's for sure. That's a really nice version. I like that a lot. Okay, we got about... Five more of the volcanoes. Whoa! Yeah, another see another great explosion. Beautiful job, Dolores. Wow. What's interesting, I can really feel the texture with the way that this one was painted. Right? I really feel and that helps give it that physical explosion. Like we feel the lava, we can almost feel the heat coming off of it interesting idea to add the texture in there to really make the texture a big part of that painting uh, here's Deborah's version wow oh is this looks like maybe a spray like you took your brush and kind of did a little bit of this kind of stuff to get the spray coming onto the painting very nice that that takes a lot of courage to do especially when you've spent all this time making a beautiful sky and everything to do that splatter over top of it because it's always you're always taking a bit of a chance you don't know how it's going to turn out so i i really applaud you for taking that risk it looks great really nice great job okay now deborah also posted a few images here i think this was photos that deborah took of a volcano herself in hawaii i don't know if it was the same one but we can see this is like standing inside the volcano and then here's someone in kind of traditional uh, garb I, if i recall doing like a performance at the edge and i think this is another this is another one you uploaded i'm not sure what this is this looks like reminds me of the artist who did the uh, covers to a few Miles Davis albums, which uh, my favorite being Bitches, Bitches Brew, which is an amazing album. <laughs> uh, but a double double LP. I used to listen to that all the time when I was in art school. Um, and then here's Ace's painting here again. I can't. I apologize, but that's anyway. Um, really nice. What I like about this, it's very. Now we have these very angular kind of shapes, which it's interesting. Like I, I feel like there's, I would not have thought about painting vo a volcano and the explosion of a volcano in a with almost geometric 
qualities because I always think of lava as being like, you know, this plasma, super flowy, organic. But there's something about these kind of, and I know these aren't perfectly geometric, but they're, they are more line oriented um, that f makes it feel uh, kind of menacing in some way that there's a the sharpness of the, the that marks that make me feel kind of like the the the, the razor quality gives it a, a sharp fierceness to it which is really interesting I like that very cool okay um Gemini says, looking forward to learning about new artists from around the world. Yes. Good, good. I think it's super interesting um, to broaden my own horizons uh, and to... Because we're surrounded by so many great artists and so, all these different cultures around the world and it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a shame that we kind of focus so much on a handful of of artists mostly old dead white men when there's so many artists that deserve I think our attention maybe more so not out of any political correctness just because there's some artists that are far superior that for lots of different reasons have been omitted from the uh, the conversation okay so here is the uh, Jacob Lawrence strike painting. And it's interesting in the comments that a number of people say, ah, I'm not really interested in baseball, so I don't really, I'm not going to paint this one. And then I think as they saw the paintings coming in from other people onto the Facebook page, start getting really excited about making this painting after all. And then I think a lot of those people ended up painting this painting. Um, despite their disinterest in sports or baseball, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a sports fan, but I also just thought that this painting, I just think is a gorgeous painting, the original um, and then the, the subsequent artworks that you guys have created. So this is the original, and I did amp the colors up a little bit because it was a little bit um, muted, but just for our sake. I, sometimes, it's, sometimes it's actually really hard for me to find high quality good images of some of the artworks that I want to paint and I go to the library and I get books and sometimes some older paintings might only be in black and white and then I'm looking at at images I can find on the web and some of them uh, I've for some of these paintings that we've I've like taken something from a book and I've scanned it in and then overlaid color from a from some grainy you know so it's like these Frankenstein images. Anyway, let's see. Let's go right back up to Ace here at the top. Um, great job. And I can't remember. So this one was done on paper with Posca pens and color pens for details using masking fluid. Interesting. Um, so I, I guess these pens were used to do some of the outlining of this gray in here. I like that you added this baseball player on the side. I remember I omitted that just out of, uh, to help simplify the picture a little bit, but I'm glad that you put that back in there. Really cool. Interesting use of color. The background is fantastic. In mine, I was going as quickly as possible because this painting started to, to, to take a little bit longer than expected. And there's a lot of detail back there. I, I was actually surprised a lot of people went back and spent a lot more time on the background and on the netting than I did. So that's always one of the interesting things when, about seeing this work is it's for me, it's like, oh, if I spent more time on it, this is my painting would also improve in the same ways that your guys have done. But I also want to think like, how could I do this painting in a reasonable amount of time? Um, so that was great. This one's fantastic. Oh, I like how Deborah, how you, because these are the, the hawkers in the stands selling the peanuts and popcorn. And I like how you actually did the texture on the baskets there. That is nice attention to detail. Great job. Beautiful. All of this looks really nice. Really cool. And 
you know, in my painting, I made the netting a little bit dark, or probably a little bit too dark that it draws a little too much attention to itself. And I also saw, well, and as frustrating as to me, and I kind of was like, oh, I'm going to go back in there and, and lighten them. If anything, what happened is a lot of people saw my results and made a decision, oh, okay, I'm not going to do what he did. I'm going to just lighten that up, make it a little bit more gray to, to great effect, right? You could almost even glaze this a little bit, adding glazing fluid or, or slow dry medium or acrylic medium, uh, matte medium into the paint just to kind of thin it to make it a little bit more transparent as you paint those, that. Anyway, I think I did that after it was painting. It was about like four and a half hours long I spent on it. And I was like, okay, I just, just got to get this done. Okay, here's Dolores' version here of a um, curler. And, I, and so I, I just wanted to include this here because, again, there was a, some people that said they didn't want to paint the, the baseball player. So I thought it was very creative of Dolores to, rather than just say, I'm not going to paint tonight, I'm going to do something different that actually appeals to them, right? So I applaud you for not taking the night off. Instead, you went and made something different that kind of connected with you a little bit more. So that was really smart. I really appreciate that. And great painting, really cool. One thing I would say is it does feel like this, the, the rock that she's about to throw here, it feels like we need a shadow on here because it's a little unclear as to whether she's holding it and it's kind of floating over the surface or if it's actually on the surface of the ice. And so one thing that can help, one of the, the, the best things that shadows can do is they can help us understand the relationship between different things in a space. So what I would do is, I, if, there, if this is actually on the ice, is adding a shadow that touches the rock, right? You could just be, you could glaze this with just a little bit of, of gray, right? Adding a little bit of black or gray into some slow dry medium so it's slightly transparent. And that way you could paint over this and it would also darken the white and the red and the blue in a way that kind of makes them look coherent together and then also add a little bit of a shadow under here under her leg perhaps either just sort of going right here or connecting to this leg and you can do the same sort of thing with her broom here is if the broom is touching the glass then the, the shadow would be touching the broom as well or you could just leave a little bit of a gap and that would tell us that the broom is you know just so it's, if it's touching the surface, the, the shadow would touch the brush. If it's a little bit higher up, then there would be a little bit of a gap. And I think that would be, for me, one of the little, just little missing pieces to finish this painting. Potentially even a little bit of um, a slight darker shade right underneath this arm. Because right now, that jacket is, I think we just need a fold or something under there. Otherwise fantastic great great work I might also give a little bit of a shadow depending on where you want the light coming from and I know in an event like this you have light coming from everywhere you know highly illuminated spaces sporting events so there's not a lot of shadows sometimes as artists we need to invent some shadows just to make things pop but I would consider putting a little bit of a shadow on her cheek here just help define that nose as well. Here's Gail's version. Cool. I wonder what you painted that on. It looks like some kind of cardboard or... Hmm. Really nice. And then maybe there was tape along those edges. Wow. And this looks like a fairly small piece of paper. So the fact that you were able to get all these details in here. I also like the way that you've left kind of rather than taking all these figures right out to the edge they are kind of um there's a little bit of a space around there i think it actually works really really well different than what i would have expected like whoops um but it, 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 to me it kind of looks like there's a cr like i mean as there is a crowd in a baseball game but they're they're not sort of going endlessly out to the side they feel kind of like you know, um, like like a community of people tightly together um, supporting this this fellow, or maybe it's the umpire or whoever. But um, 
like a smaller, tighter community of people. Interesting. I like that. Here's Gemini's version. I think, and this one was done with pastels. So I think Gemini's used pastels for a few artworks. I think artworks coming up that we haven't yet seen. Really nice. So with pastels, and especially on this textured sketchbook paper or canvas, I'm not exactly sure. It looks like paper. Um, we see a lot more of this white coming through, which, you know, in between the colors, which is almost impossible to avoid. But it's also one of the reasons why people choose textured paper for pastel anyway, because they want that effect. They want a little bit of the, the paper coming through, because otherwise you'd really have to work the, can the canvas or the, to get it into the, the weave of the, in the texture there. Really cool. It turned out really great. This looks like this is chalk pastels, I think. I think that's what that is. Really nice. I haven't used chalk pastels in years, I've, although I've got hundreds of sticks behind me. It might be fun to do a, a whole course on pastels and Conte and stuff. Put that or file that way. Uh, file that away in my brain to do a, a whole intro to pastels course. I don't, think, I don't think there's very many of those out there. Um, if, if people would be interested in learning how to, to draw with pastels, let me know in the comments. So, um, uh, let me see. Okay, um, did we skip over a few? Okay, here's Heidi's. <clears throat> Great job. I love the netting, nice and subtle. Also, some of the colors in behind are a little bit more subdued, both because they're further into the background, so we'd expect more atmosphere there. But also it, it creates a little bit more separation between all of those figures and the foreground figures, right? Great, really nice. Beautiful, don't have much to say about that. I like this. I like these the pinks and purples in the shadows on the clothing. Very, very effective. Well done. That's the original and yours is pretty darn close to the original there. That's great, Laurie. Well done love all the detail in the background beautiful wow really nice that turned out great I like this and again you added the figure on the left it's interesting to see how you know some people just go and they and they change the painting a little bit add or they sometimes they make the painting look closer to the original than, than myself maybe um so I, I i think that's fantastic great job love this may really nice i love the baseball player up front here i would maybe think about adding a little something around to these hands maybe outlining part of the hand here to define the shape over the other and i think there was a little swirl on the end of so that's the original otherwise fantastic really nice really good job me when you do the same thing with me the the the, the netting in the back is a little bit darker uh, I don't, it doesn't, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, in fact, I think yours is lighter than mine. Mine was quite dark, the netting, or, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it works well. well um, what else I want to say? Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually quite like how, how subdued these colors are in the background. Really good job. Continue along. Wow, Molly. That's fantastic. And I love how you framed this. Um, you know what? Well, while we're talking about...
Okay, okay, so it looks like I'm, I guess you, could probably, you should be able to hear me now. Maybe it's a little bit loud. How's that? Still really loud. How's that? Check, check. <laughs> um. How's that volume when I'm talking like that? Okay. So now I'm just using my overhead camera's microphone. It's not ideal. I'm not sure what happened. I think when I... I think I just broke my microphone reaching across the room. Because this isn't... Check, check. Hello, hello. Okay. Well, I was wanting to get a new microphone anyway, so now i got to... An excuse. Um, you can't hear me? Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, so let me kind of go... Where was I... Before that happened? I think I was talking about... Oh, I think I was up here. I was talking about Molly's. So I love the frame on here. I like that you kept this kind of spare... Um, uh, without adding the netting, which is an interesting kind of uh, strategy there. And then here's Richard's, which I, I, I was sort of showing when I added the... I mean, let me do this again here. Um, so I went up to Jacob Lawrence's original here, and I just reduced the saturation. I think the original painting was a lot more like this. Um... And so I just, oh, okay. 
Um, there we go. So, so I just reduced the, the the saturation from the original. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I was, what I was saying is, Richard, looks like you painted the, this painting a lot closer to the original uh, saturation level to, to the way Jacob Lawrence did, which I think is actually really really nice. I always tend to kind of amp up the saturation, just like my style. Anyway, here's Shelley's version here with um, the netting, which is much more prominent, kind of like mine. But I don't mind it. Again, I, it kind of reminds me of of like a uh, um, uh, like a, an atlas or you know like a you know, latitude and longitude on a, on a map. So I think it works actually quite effectively here. We have Susan's similarly. Wow, looks oh, come on. Really nice, and especially because we don't have any black lines in the foreground. This really pops. It does one thing with black lines; they tend to want to sit on the very front of an image, and so when we have big black lines and we put them into the background, it can kind of compete a little bit with the foreground elements. Having said that, one of the the big um, one of the what would you call it? Uh, what, what are the major themes in modern art? And when I talk about modernism and modern art, modern art is a, is a, is art that spans from about 1850 to uh, 1960, and then you have post-modernism afterwards. Some people will say modernism is just continued, and there's still modernist artists out there. But modern, one of the, the major themes in modern art is flatness. And artists um, who are playing with color and line and shape and uh, texture and so on and so forth in order to to challenge or invert or play with space in a painting. So often, uh, like, artists play in, you know, some of the rules, quote-unquote, that we've learned about hot and cool colors, artists play with those in order to kind of create a confusion as to what is in behind and in the foreground. So, uh, and there's many, many, many famous paintings that have used this, which also makes it a little bit difficult for me as a teacher trying to teach some of these things because it's kind of helpful to know the rules before we break them. So sometimes in, in these classes, like um, Edward Munch, for instance, really played with that a lot. And in the, in the famous Scream painting, he's got some warm colors in the background, cool colors in the foreground, precisely to create this weird um, uncanny quality while you're looking at the painting, which mirrors this kind of, this person going through this kind of existential crisis, right? So, you playing with, you know, like I said, like the black being in the background, which would not be something that uh, Rembrandt or, or Da Vinci would do, but is something that, like, Matisse or Picasso would, would have done, or Warhol would do, because they were deliberately trying to play with some of the quote-unquote rules, right? And they're trying to break the rules and it still make the picture look acceptable and exciting and interesting, right? Um, okay, so, this, anyway, sorry, this looks great, Susan. <laughs> I like that. And here is Charmaze. Again, going back a little bit more towards the original, especially with the way that we've got this, um, these semi-transparent layers. Works really, really nice. Um, thank you, guys. Looking at the comments, wow, lots of comments here. Let me just take a second now that we've reached the end of Jacob Lawrence here. To, I mean, some of these are specific to paintings we were looking at 20 minutes ago. Um, Deborah says, "Yes, Michael, is the volcano that erupted and the painting that I uploaded with the photo is the goddess of Peli. We bought the card of her in Hawaii. Okay, so that was when we were. T I was talking about." Uh, um, the photographs of the volcano, that was the actual volcano that erupted. That's cool. So you had visited that volcano. 
Um, thank you so much for your input. I'm so looking forward to the new artist, as Gemini says. Yes. And Gemini says, oh my god, pastels, a uh, pastels course? Yes, I'm in. And May says, I'm looking forward to painting the Asian artists in May. Cool, cool, cool. And May says, I'm always like to learn something new, so a pastel class would be nice. Great. And then a lot of people saying, I can't hear you, and now I hear you again. Good, good. <laughs> um, I'm curious to what the quality of the, the audio is right now. It's pr probably much louder than it's been before. That's why I had to lower it down. So, anyway. I shall find out soon enough. So, this was um, another Jacob Lawrence painting that we did. Uh, this is the original painting that Jacob Lawrence did of uh, General Toussaint L'Ouverture, which... Um, I talked kind of extensively about who this figure was in, in terms of history in the Tiger Woods episode. So some of you are like, what? when did we make this painting? Well, that's why the Tiger Woods episode ended up being five hours long, because I made two paintings during that episode. Um, so if you watch that episode, like a few people here did, you would have had a chance to do the Tiger Woods and this other Jacob Lawrence painting. So here's the original painting. Uh, here's May's version of the painting. Cool, I love all this texture in the background. Very cool. All right, kind of, um, I think it, this one was also a lot of drawing in here. So a, a lot of line, I think when you look at the original, it seems pretty straightforward. Then you're like, I was like, oh man, there's a lot of painting that's gotta be, you know, fine painting that's gotta be done in here. Uh, but I am, I am impressed, May, that you took it upon yourself to, to attempt it. Great job. Um, I love the, the uh, like there's a lot of subtleties here like the way that the different two different browns here are very similar here works really well and here's Helen's painting version of it great job so looks like Helen is a, a newer um, a, a new painter new 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 creative uh, member of our community here one looks great. You did a great job there, Helen. Very impressed. Again, very subtle transition between these two different colors on this highlight here. And I think, you know, I was, I, I also did, I think my, I pushed that contrast a little bit more to brighten up so it was a little bit more visible between the two of them. Um, just so that it didn't look too much like a full, full on silhouette. Great job. And here's Heidi's version of this painting as well particularly like what you did up here. I felt like mine, in retrospect, is a little bit lazy the way I did here. So you did a great job. And I also liked your background a lot. Really nice how you filled that in. Beautiful. So one of the reasons why I did the Jacob Lawrence with the Tiger Woods painting, which I'll just jump to right now, is I was thinking like, oh, wouldn't it be, f like, how, like, how do we paint this? Where's the original? So here's the original Tiger Woods photograph. I just thought, you know, as opposed to just trying to paint this entirely so-called realistically, what if we had painted the Jacob Lawrence a the, the, uh, couple days before, and I really liked that General Nouvelle Toussaint painting, so I thought, oh, maybe we could paint <laughs> Tiger Woods like Jacob Lawrence did. And so some of you use that same approach and some of you didn't which you know is doesn't bother me either way so here's uh helen's painting version great job I mean, obviously i think there's a a highlight there it's a little distracting in the photo goodness excuse me i love the way that these folds turned out on your painting really nice that's great um yeah, beautiful. I love, you know, it's funny. And even in my own painting, his biceps and stuff look like ginormous. He looks like a bodybuilder, right? It's almost a little bit silly in my painting. It looks like you've toned yours down a bit. It looks great. Good job. And the face turned out, you did a great job with that face. Here's Heidi's version. Interesting, Heidi. Oh, cool. I love the way you did the face. The only thing I would say is we might want to have a little bit more of a darker quality underneath the the baseball hat. 
can't remember how I did mine, but um, I think it looks great. Yeah, and the, the way that you've added this texture into the background, I think is super effective. It makes it look a little bit more complex than this. I think I just made a very solid color for the background. I think it's very effective, however. Ooh, very cool. I, what I like about this version, Dolores, is how with these, you really made these yellow lines like very, very distinct. Like it's, there's no question that they're an artistic choice in here. So that turned out really, really nice. I think just little things with the face is I think we want to just see a little bit more um, contrast. So we should see a little bit more highlights and a little bit darker. So I think you've actually done a pretty good job under the hat. We just might want to see a little bit of light on the maybe tip of the nose and on the cheek and chin and stuff. Tiny little things, but you know, would might help a little bit. And also maybe a little bit darker underneath the the eyebrow ridge here just to kind of make because this yeah i think we just need you know or even just put an eyebrow but it'll, even just dark and taking a bit of this darker color put under there would help either way fantastic again i really like the way you did the shirt it turned out really nice and i like the nike you put the nike swoosh back in which i took out that's smart here's deborah's version oh very different so here Deborah made a decision to omit the yellow lines and put more of the um, the more natural kind of like the photograph in here. So we have these darker folds, which makes more sense. Um, but again, if we kind of go back to this original, like this is what I was inspired by is the way that um, Jacob Lawrence painted these the folds. Right. Um, so, but it's cool. I, I like you, what you've got here with the darker, um, the shadow being cast by the the baseball cap on his face. I think turned out really, really well. Very cool. There is a little bit, and I would say this is common in all the images. Maybe I'll we'll look at Charmaine's here really quickly. Oh, this is great too. So, but look at these big big guns he's got there. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> um, very nice. And these shadows and the folds of the fabric turn out really, especially in here, really, really nice. Good job. One of the things that is a little, this is a tricky image in that, you know, in the photograph, the way that these, his wrists are, um, and the way he's twisted his body, is that this, and is tricky because and also the club is coming towards us and in in fairness I didn't really if we were to paint try to paint this very realistically I would actually either look for a different photograph to begin with or I would have spent a lot more time in this particular area and really brightening up this hand to really show it coming forward off of the body because the way that I, in, I also painted it is it, it kind of makes the, the arms look a little bit small and pressed into the body, which makes it kind of slightly nonsensical. So one of the, and I've, I've said this before, sometimes you have to paint things wrong in order to make it look right. So to, to make the, the hands and everything look like they're coming out a little bit more, you sometimes have to give them a little bit more um, either light or color that is slightly extraordinary in order to make it our minds make logic sense of it and you could say well that's the way that it looks like in the photograph and you're like okay yeah but the photo in the photograph our minds can make it make sense in a painting if we sometimes if we paint a painting exactly like the photograph people think there's something wrong with the painting anyway Let's push forward here. How are we doing? Wow, there's still so many to do. I think let's try to do four more here. Um, let's see, maybe we can get to Da Vinci. It would be great if we could get all the way there. So, this is Alyssa Carson, the astronaut in training. And... 
this is the original photograph that was on her website and this one was a lot of fun it was a, definitely a challenge i think a lot of people including myself had some difficulty with the colors of the face and it is you know when you're painting someone whose face ha is being illuminated with colored light it is that's a really tricky thing to do to pull it off to make it still look like we're painting a person not as not a space alien <laughs> right so in this case like the the actual studio lighting that that she was you know there's obviously some kind of bluish light that was being cast onto her face and you can see that 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 light is causing some reflections on the helmet like probably a very s small pin light that's focused bouncing right on here so it's not disrupting the the oranges around it but it does pose some problems for a painter like ourselves to try to replicate that so um, some people opted to kind of take the blue out entirely and some people decided to make it look more blue or green etc right so I think it's just as long as you you understand that those that challenge exists how you deal with it is so here we have um, Charmé I think this is so this is the first version Charmé and then I think went back in here and just um, added a little bit more thickness to the back of the neck there. Is that the only change? May have changed the, made the background a little bit more red. Interesting. Uh, I can see why you were motivated to widen this here. I would say what I would have done because it now has a bit of like I would have maybe kept the same kind of uh, this shape rather than kind of going a little, there's a little bit more of a humpback kind of quality here I mean it's super small thing um, overall though I think and it also looks like the face was a lot greener and then you add a lot more warmth onto the face, which I think is very effective. I think that turned out really, really well. Um, overall, I think you did a fantastic job with this painting, Charmaine. Well done. Really good. Yeah, I, I do think the second version is much more effective. And I would, you know, it's great to, you know, the fact that you can, like, one of my favorite things, I'll just go back to this really briefly, is that one of my favorite aspects of painting is the end of the painting is and you it doesn't really come across in the classes as I'm teaching them because usually by the end there I'm like oh my goodness I can hear the, the bath running and my wife getting ready to, to put her daughter in the bath and that's usually my job which is one of my favorite parts of the day so I'm always like I hear that bath running and then I start really picking up the pace but generally like if I'm painting on my own and I'm not being filmed and it's not streaming live that 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 part of the painting is the part where I slow down and then I'm often I set my painting up and I just sort of sit back and I look at it I might go uh, have dinner I might wait till the next day and come back fresh and I've kind of you know I have an idea of what it looks like in my head and then I come back and look at it and think about what it looks like in my mind as to what I actually see and then I add and tinker with it a little bit it's been I like taken all of my strength to not go back and rework some of the paintings that that I'd finished just because I kind of want to keep them to look exactly like what they looked like on camera but for many of you what I think is really great is that you guys have gone back and you know you've you've let it sit for maybe a day you obviously took a photograph uploaded it and then thought you know what there's something missing here and you've you've made some you've examined it and and kind of determined what the issues were and then fixed them or added or changed things afterwards and at that that part of the creative mind of examining your own artwork and figuring out what needs to be done uh, to make it even better is a really important skill to develop and it's not even so much that you that you go and make those changes as as much as you even just looking at it and identify what is working and what's not working and then you're like okay next time I make a painting I'm gonna do da 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 
because I've learned from my previous painting what to do or what not to do. And if you can start developing that muscle, then you're really on your way to being a professional artist, to be quite frank, right? Because it's often, you know, the a beginner artist really struggles to, 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 to understand what is wrong or what's not working about a painting. So the more and more painting you do, the more you start kind of developing that skill to, to, to analyze your own artwork. Right? Okay, so sorry. Let me continue on here. Here's Susan's. Wow, I love this eye. Boy, she looks fierce. Oh my goodness. That looks great. Love that. And these like pink hot lips. That is very cool. Um, I love this. Great job. And I love the sky. I love the, 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 uh, the texture you've added into the sky or the background, however you want to think about it. Really nice. And it probably took a lot of courage to leave this face as blue as it does. But I think it's great. Really nice. Great job, Susan. Shelly's version here, too. I love this background here that you've done. You've added to it. I think the body is really well done. The helmet, I think you did a fantastic job. Oh, where did we go? You know, the, I think the eyes, as we were painting it, has kind of shifted about a little bit. But I don't mind, you know, obviously people like Picasso um, made a whole career out of playing with um, the structure of the human face. And we've become accustomed to to artists playing around and reorganizing, playing with um, proportions. And it's not so weird when we do it ourselves, right? So I don't mind that there's a bit of um, reorganization of some of the, the face here. I actually think it works kind of quite well. Um, it does make it look like her she's turned her head just a little bit, which would make me feel like the, the, the helmet itself might... Because the helmet is kind of pointing almost sideways. We might want to just give these rings a little bit more of an arc to reflect her face kind of turning a bit. But actually I think it you know, turned out really nice. And, it's, and the way that it's painted also, I think turned out really well. So this was one of those, after, I think at this point in the class, one of the things that I realized was, and I've talked about this subsequently when we're painting portraits, is I started to then go and paint the, the darker areas of faces, just like we did with Amra, uh, Amrita Shargil just a few days ago, is to paint the darker parts first and then to start painting in the colors so that we don't lose the structure of the face. Um, so that, that this was one of those painters I was like, oh, you know what, I think in the future I'm going to do it this way just so that it helps people. Um, because it is a little bit tricky. If we obliterate the face with, with paint right off the bat, People can lose the shape of the face really quickly. So that's just one thing I've learned as a teacher to, to kind of just reorient the, the order that I do things. But I do think this painting turned out really, really well on its own regardless. I'm actually quite happy with the way it turned out. You did a great job, Shelley. Okay. Here's May's version. Wow. I like this a lot. I like these this eye in here. Fantastic. Wow, May. That's great. This is definitely one of your best. That is really cool. I like that. She looks, again, very fierce. I love the... So this... Where, what was the other portrait you did that I really liked? The way that you had... Uh, um... Well, I think it was the Amanda Gorman that you painted, right? You just could really see the layers of paint. So this is really effective. The, I'm not sh maybe you're putting, you're glazing this or slow dry medium, but you're getting a lot of thin layers of paint in there. I think that's working really, really well for you. Great job. I like that a lot. Way, way to go, man. Wow, and Heidi. Very cool. I like that. You, you went right in there and took this kind of green and yellow and actually put it onto the face, which is very bold. Very bold choice, and I think it really paid off here. 
very cool. I like this a lot. And I like that you not only did that, but you also put this yellow and green uh, onto the outer shapes of these of the the helmet itself. Wow. Oh my goodness. And then look at these. They're so great, you guys. And here's Dolores' version. Fantastic. Look at how all these different colors in the face, all these different reflections coming from all over the place, and you've captured it all in here. I think this is better. You did a better job on the face than I did. Really proud of you. Well done. And I think you, um, you may have added some red highlights onto the metal or the aluminum or whatever this helmet is made of. That is also very effective. Very interesting. I like that. Because I think I painted this blue. I can't remember what was there. Um, so it definitely warms the whole thing up. I love those creative choices. Great job. And here's Deborah's version. So Deborah did a kind of reworking of it. Switched everything around. Changed the color of her clothing. And put her onto a spaceship. <laughs> it's looking through the window at Mars. I think it's great. I, I remember you were saying during the class, oh, I'm doing something a little bit different. This is definitely different, but, you know, it's, uh, I think we've got, you know, you definitely added an extra challenge for yourself, so now you got the sun, ah, it keeps switching, kind of beaming right through the window, creating all these reflections on her mask. Fantastic. I wonder what logo this is. What, what, uh, I wonder what that means. It looks like a dove with some, like, red stripes on it. I don't know what that be curious to know in the comments there, Deborah, if, if that's a, a logo you invented or that's actually a belongs to a space agency that I'm not aware of. Very cool. And was I, did I skip anything here? Great job. Wow. Um, okay. Oh, you know what? I skipped. Oh, there's a lot of these Bill Trailers paintings. Um, we technically we've we've talked about ten different artworks thus far, but because there's you know um, the paint the news and the uh, um, master study all at once here, it feels like I'm going slower than I am. But we're, we're sort of like halfway through everything we've done so far. So we're going to do, have to do another one of these sessions probably maybe next week or the week after um, to kind of catch up on, on where we're at. But it's kind of nice just even going back. It seems like this was two years ago that we did all these paintings. Anyway, let's look at uh, the Bill Trailer images here. These are his paintings. And then who's first up here? Deborah. Cool. You know, I you, I think it looks like you painted the, the use the same colors that that I did in mine. I think in your your comments, like you said, the, the colors were off in the photograph. What's interesting, we're going to see a few people who kind of played with the colors a little bit more, and um, I I could be convinced of lots of different color schemes for these images. So. I think it's turned out really great. I like I like everything we see here. I don't. It doesn't look like you used. Maybe you did use the tape method. It's hard to tell. And either way, it turned out really well. Here's Dolores's version here, and I think if I remember, Dolores said there was some kind of issue with the matte medium that she put on here, and then after peeling it off, the tape kind of wasn't happy with it, so then kind of went back in there. Whatever, whatever it takes, right? And I think. You know, that might be frustrating for this painting. You're like, oh, but if you understand, you learn like, oh, okay, next time I make this painting, I'm going to be careful with how I apply the matte medium. Then it makes this very successful, right? This is a really important step in your learning process. So, I mean, I, and if anything, I don't, it doesn't bother me. One of the things I would say, if that kind of thing happens and you've got a result like this, it's sort of like jazz music. If you've heard like jazz improvisers talk about it. if you make a mistake, just make it again, and everyone thinks you did it deliberately, right? So what I would do is potentially just take some more of that matte medium and just paint a bunch of clear matte medium around here so it's not just on the edges, and then just paint this gold color back over top of it 
and it will look like it'll it'll help integrate those marks it might be very difficult to ma to mix and match this color again but just to kind of if you do have a mistake like that trying to quote unquote fix the mistake can can be more difficult and can can make the problem worse than repeating the mistake and amplifying the mistake and therefore it actually becomes like a happy accident as bob ross says right so i think a big part of being an artist is is when you see quote unquote mistakes happen is rather than panicking is to try to like use your the great wisdom within you to try to understand what the mistake is teaching us and how we can the opportunity that is it's presenting us right because sometimes it's like oh this is not turning out the way i wanted it to well the mistake presents us with another opportunity a different direction that we maybe never even occurred to us that's what i think is brilliant about bob ross talking about the happy accident because it's an accident that we're happy that has happened because it's like whoa that's a great accident now it's like I've, i see it's like almost you know it's like a um in a you're you've bought a a, a mansion and and you're furnishing your mansion and you're putting books on the bookshelf and you accidentally pull a, a old book dusty book off the bookshelf and it turns out and it opens up a hallway and you see all these unexplored rooms and stuff right uh, but it's like that kind of thing like oh this was an accident and now i've found a whole new opening and passageways and hidden places to explore uh, okay, here's uh, Heidi's here. Again, I suspect some of this orange cast is probably a little bit of the photograph, um, but I think it, either way, so it looks like really kind of energetic as it is. Great job. I really liked the, um, doing this uh, Bill Trailer artworks. Yeah, this is interesting. So Heidi, did you put them in these frames or is this a photograph that you... I'm not sure exactly, but the, in, the paintings you made are fantastic. I love these. I, w I really wanted to make all of these, the the images that I included and put into the Dropbox. We just didn't have time for, and I, in my mind, I think, okay, I'm going to do another episode. I'm going to paint those one day. So I'm really happy that so many of you did go and continue to, because there's, what, four other paintings you could make from this series? Um... Here's Irene's. I love this, Irene, that you went and added the texture of the paper. I love the shadow under here. One of the things that I would, if I had more time, I would actually add a little bit of texture onto the paper itself. Um, I think that would, but I mean, that would be maybe that episode one day that I'll film. That's great. Really cool. I like this one a lot. It was really hard to choose between these different images which one to do. Cool. Here's Josh's version of it. Great job, Josh. Looks fantastic. I love the brushy background, painterly background. There's another one Josh did. Great. Yeah, just I love the speed of these brush strokes. There's a lot of confidence in your mark making, Josh. Here's May's version. Great job, May. I like wow, this, I like this kind of outline here this is really interesting it makes me think of a fun way to do like a frame inside of a painting you know often when we think of frames it's got to be this very rigid square rectangular frame very kind of boring um versus doing this this kind of makes me it reminds me of like i don't know like television shows when people would have a dream and it would go and the colors would kind of get a little psychedelic and when we would see kind of opening into a different space that's what this feels like it feels like we're looking through this portal into a different dimension where this bill trailer image exists really i like that a lot very cool nice here's an, another great one by may beautiful job oh you've got a whole bunch of these great i like that you did all these may Cool. Great. Love it. Well done. And I like, even though this is on a dark blue background, there's a little bit darker shadows on these edges. Very smart. Really appreciate that. And woo, I don't think anyone else did this one by Bill Trailer, the woman here. 
that turned out great. Again, I love this the texture of the paper on the outside. Really nice. And even actually the way that you've painted in here, the slight, very subtle variation on here actually helps make it look like the paper itself has a little bit more form to it and it's not totally flat. Peter's version looks great. <laughs> There's a little bit of that white edge around here, which is kind of nice. You know, if you tear paper, it doesn't tear in like sharp lines. We've we got the fiber of the paper, which is the way that, that it looks like to me here. And Richard's version of it here looks great. It looks definitely a little bit more yellowish, but again, I think that's probably the photograph. Cool. And here's Susan's. Yeah, these are great. I love this. I like these little little hints of the shadows around the outside edge. It looks fantastic. Oh, and oh, here's Charmé did a long canvas. That's cool. Seeing them all side by side. Oh, very cool. And this looks like a different kind of take on the bird too. So I wonder if that was another one of Bill Trailer's images, or is this something you reworked? But that is cool. I like a lot of. You know, um, his images are very strange and weird, and and what he was actually painting and talking about is is left to the imagination, right? So it's not quite clear if they were metaphors for something else, metaphors or hidden messages for his own ex terrible experiences being a slave, and then being quote unquote emancipated, but working on a farm. Um, uh, in this way that was still kind of like slavery. We're not going to get in the whole thing, but it's like, was he trying to communicate some of those things that he wasn't allowed to communicate or didn't feel comfortable talking about or felt, um, or, or was he just having fun and being playful? That's something that, that the you know, historians are, are debating till this, to this day. Um, how are we doing for time? Maybe let's let's take a look at here's the the COVID anniversary <laughs> painting here. So here's the original image, which I think is a really cool, weird image. These like raspberries glued to this ball of porridge or so whatever this is. Um, I really like that. And there was a number of people, the very, when I first started doing the, the paint the news that really wanted to do this image. Um, and I, I was happy that we that I finally had a bit of an opportunity to kind of talk a little bit more about that experience of, uh, my own personal experience of during this whole pandemic. So that gave me an opportunity to kind of talk about some of those things. I personally... My version of this painting is probably one of the paintings I'm least happy with, which is surprising to see how well other people did with this painting. Um, afterwards, or, I mean, I won't even get into all the, some of the issues I had with my painting, um, but uh, if I, this would be probably one of the first ones that I would redo if I was going to redo some of these. But anyway, let's go to Sue. Wow, that's really cool, Sue. That turned out great. I like this a lot. I actually really like that you did the, put the texture on these because I think mine I just kept pretty simple. These little, I don't, what did I call these lollipops or whatever um, coming out of here, the raspberries. Very cool. I like that. Whoa, Susan, that's cool. I like how dark you went, how much contrast you put in there. Very cool. It starts to look like a. a a menacing asteroid or something, right? It's very, especially floating around in that dark space. That's really nice. Actually, you did a really nice job on that. And then here's Vicky. Vicky, another new member of the community here. And I can't, he said, uh, COVID is the new black with a balloon is in your comment. So I, um, I don't know if that's like a reference to orange is the new black that, um, the television show series but uh <laughs> it is kind of funny the way you've done this so it's this kind of look like almost like the banksy painting of the girl with the balloon and covid being the balloon um you know i've certainly 
there's a lot of room in this painting or with this I, this the theme of this painting to be very playful right covid was is a horrible thing that has happened to to the world and speaking of which my wife and i just went and got covid tests earlier today um uh, so it's still there's still lots of um the road is still uh, you know uh, uh, there's still lots of 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 this this is going to be around for a while in front of us for a while but um so that's why i felt it was kind of like the elephant in the room eventually we have to do something and address it and paint it and try to make it beautiful this horrible thing anyway great painting here deborah um i think one of the things my own criticisms of my own painting is that i didn't have enough contrast in it and so I would also end th that I flattened this whole shape out with some of my shadows and everything so I see some of those same sort of things in this painting which is all on me that's all all my you know uh, stuff that I got to do to fix uh, or I would do differently I would probably do this entire painting very differently than than I did here um, Oh, wow, Dolores, great. I love this texture in here. See, this is kind of closer to where I was hoping to take mine. Um, and uh, really nice. That This is great. I think this is probably better than I did. Yeah, really nice. Wow, great. I love these this kind of yellow highlight on there. Whoa, and here's Heidi's version of it whoa totally different that's very wild Heidi I love this uh this is what can happen when you paint right after major dental work <laughs> I think it was part of your comment on Facebook there um which is pretty funny I you know I like that there's you've added little things textures into the background these spirals and everything I, I don't know if that was just born out of frustration or, or something but it does add something really neat and playful to that to this image Right, and that was the whole idea that I had behind making this painting, was taking this horrible, ugly, menacing thing that, you know, if you just look at it as objectively as possible, is kind of a beautiful form. And then how can we take that and make it even more beautiful, right? And and to kind of steal back and in, or inject beauty into into this into the negativity. Um, yeah, this is, so this is Les Brown was the one who requested this painting. And here's May's version of it too. All right, I, get, I like how you went nice and dark here, added some contrast to it. That's great. And I like also how you brightened up that background. Really cool. Great job, you guys. Um, okay, so I see the comments. Gemini says, actually, my name is Vicky. Uh, Gemini is only for my Facebook account. Indeed, it is a mix of, or this painting is a mix of Banksy and uh, another piece. Oh, yeah, there we are. I'll have to remember that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, so Vicky and Gemini. Ah. <laughs> I've, I've got it. Okay, I got it. Okay, so I think maybe we'll end it here with Giorgio O'Keefe, because um, this is some great artwork, and then I think there's still a lot of paintings people are still finishing, so probably ending halfway is not a bad idea anyway, just because um, it'll give some people an opportunity to go back and finish some and upload some of the paintings that we haven't that they haven't finished yet. So here's the original Giorgio O'Keefe. I I just love this. This is. If you look her up, this is not one of the very first images that comes up. Some of the, the images that come up are the ones that have sold recently for tens of millions of dollars and are therefore more in the news. But this one was the one that I just, I love the this, this, this fringe, I guess, uh, on the, the ends. I like the colors a lot. Um, and despite everything, I thought, some of the other ones look a little bit more simple, but I think are deceptively complex. Where I think this one maybe looks complicated and maybe hopefully is was a little bit easier. 
but it, it, it maybe looks complicated and it it maybe is complicated or it's not as many surprises because I, I think sometimes and one of my own challenges is to try to find a painting that we can do that that is not going to be super discouraging for, for people and sometimes paintings that look really really easy um, can be but but that aren't easy can or maybe some of the worst paintings for for us to do or for a beginner artists to do because people look at it like why well, this painting any idiot can do this painting in 20 minutes and here I am four hours into it and I can't do it what and on earth is wrong with me so it, it you know artists I think a lot of artists strive to make their paintings look very easy right Matisse talks about this is like you want it to make it look like it was done instantly and it's fresh and easy whereas Matisse would work on these paintings for months and months and months to create a painting that looked like it was just done in 20 minutes right so because they want it to look like artists want to, to create the appearance of genius right that's just like boom <laughs> and there's a great painting right but it's really 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 difficult to to make a painting look like that so often some of those paintings that look like they're boom and really that came off in 20 minutes can be the most difficult paintings to do because a lot of beginner artists don't realize all of the work that's got to go in to making a simple painting look simple or a complex painting look simple anyway there's <laughs> twisting myself into a knot so let's uh, where should we start maybe let's go down to here charmay's version Wow, that is cool. I like that a lot. Really nice. I love, I, you know, I don't know how I would describe these tassels or fringe on the edge. Turned out really nicely. Great transitions of color. Really nice and glowing. Beautiful job. Wow, here's Susan's version. Okay, great. Totally different though, right? You know, different uses of color. This one's got a lot more purple. I think there's a lot of purple in my version of the painting, too. Um, just because also, when we're thinking about, like, often when you're painting, you want to think about using the opposite color in the shadow. So if you're painting, like, a red apple, you might want to consider using blue and green in the shadows, using the contrasting um, color on the color wheel, helps give it volume um, and is very pleasing to the eye those complementary color as um, uh, palettes not that you you, you I mean because even here Charmé's done we have those purples and greens in this painting obviously but much more muted right which is there's nothing wrong with that either it's just how much you want to uh, how much you want to push or pull those contrasts or extremes Really nice, Susan. Great job here. I love this. Really nice. Uh, there's very kind of nice flowing shapes and forms. This reminds me a lot of Willem de Kooning's late paintings. Right? Just there's a real nice... Like this... Doesn't this sort of look like a, a ballet dancer? Like this is like the hips and here's one leg and another leg and two arms. Sort of this very uh carefree dance happening here which i don't i don't think i've seen i guess now now that i'm seeing it, i'm not going to be able to unsee it but i saw that in your painting here here's shelly's version wow very different very different kind of approach here and we've seen this paint that your your style coming through in a number of your paintings um especially the ay jackson one you're one of the only ones that i've seen so far that did the ay jackson and you crushed like you did such a great i'm gonna say crushed this is a, a term a few of my friends use like you crushed that painting i did such an awesome job on that we're not gonna have time to look at it today but it should be motivating for other people if you're on the facebook page is to look at a few of the paintings that other people did of the ay jackson which i think was one of my favorite paintings to do so i look forward to seeing more people attempt it anyway great job here way to go shelly i like again just you know what's so like here we're just like these three different paintings painted in three different ways but of the same thing and we start seeing people's own individual style starting to kind of come more and more to the fore right 
whoa, Peter, even here, looks great. Right? Like, I love, like, just the way that you've painted this. And again, Peter did a really cool self-portrait. And I see the same sort of painting style in that portrait, which we're not going to talk about, we'll talk about in a couple weeks, in this painting here. I mean, I, just for me as a teacher, the most satisfying thing as being an art teacher is when we, when, when you know, we're, we're doing this master study where we're trying to replicate other people's art. But the more and more paintings that we are creating, the more we start seeing those people's artwork through different people's lenses, right? You know, at first, it doesn't there's no lens at all like we're just trying to like reproduce but but you can't help but that lens starts to become more and more apparent and that's what we want i know some people want to make it exactly like the original and, that, and that's there's uses to that and it's an interesting uh, uh practice to do but what i would like for everyone to eventually have is is a is a is confidence in expressing themselves and and so it's uh, how to like anyway that's uh, it's so exciting especially those of you that have been painting with me for a while to really start seeing your own unique um voice coming through these paintings so great job here peter and may wow that's cool like i love how soft this feels right so we have these little fringes, but unlike me and a lot of other people who really did a big deal of accentuating them, what you've done is made them much more soft, soft edges around here, which makes the flower maybe a little bit more, um, arguably this flower can, could be seen as a bit of a menacing quality with the way that those kind of sharp points, but you've sort of softened it down and made it um, less... I don't know, just just more uh, um, yeah, I don't know, softer at all to say. That's great. Very nice, really nice. I, mean, I like these this these cooler colors down here. Great job. Wow, another one. See, just totally different, right? This is so cool. Like beautiful. I love these very pastel kind of colors that you've got in here Irene really cool let's see just a bit more huh. so this is very similar to the way that May did hers too right the softening of these edges rather than the sharpening of them as the as I did great job really nice and also low contrast right there's I think in mine, I really amped up the contrast between the, um, the outer shapes and the background, like the foreground elements and the background elements, whereas you're kind of softening that out and it becomes, a, um, yeah, just uh, a, a less, there's less depth in the painting, but not that that's, you need it. More or less depth doesn't make it a better or worse painting. Wow. Okay, so you see... Again, here we have another approach here. We have these the kind of this fringe, but it's it's also fairly subtle. So this is kind of almost like in between, let's say if we say like Irene and May are on one side of kind of a soft edges and then myself being on the far extreme of pointy hard edges, we have that you're a little bit more in between here. And you did a really great job of, of making them <clears throat> they're visible but not like overly kind of aggressive. And here's Gemini or Vicky, right? If, if, if I can get that right from now on, right? That's it is Vicky. Um, uh, so is this? I was just gonna say it's done with pastels, right? Because it is done with pastels. I did make a note. Oh, oops. Where are we? That is really nice. This is this is a great painting to try pastels with because it you can do a lot of nice soft blending between the colors, so it worked out really really well. Nice job, especially up in these areas. That's fun, cool. I think you, I like this a lot. 
Okay, uh, Gail's version. Oh, again, it's interesting how so many of you really softened out the edges of the flower. I, I think it was a really smart choice. Not something I would have done. A really nice blending going on in and around here. You know, I think one of the things, I think a lot of people when they think about wanting to blend with acrylics, really want it to be like a computer. Like, it's totally completely perfectly smooth transition from one color to the next that is really 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 hard to do with acrylic paint it's much easier to do with oil paint but I would personally suggest that um, trying to get that perfect blending to happen is sort of like a fool's errand right like you could spend decades trying to get it to look really nice and there are some artists that have kind of mastered it but I would also say that part of the pleasure of painting is rather than trying to be a robot is to uh, is is the handmade quality that we want that that we kind of want to see that the 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 brush strokes in there and we, f we feel the hand of the artist in there you know, one of the things people appreciate the most about Leonardo and the Mona Lisa is that there, it, it doesn't appear to be handmade at all. Like, it's it it's like this perfect quality, right? We don't see any brush strokes in there whatsoever. Everything is, and that's why it took him like three years or more, some people say 15 years to make that painting, right? We're trying to make these paintings in three to five hours, perhaps, right? And so to getting that perfect transition for, and, and in acrylics, right, is, is very difficult. And I love seeing this kind of, these textures and the building up of paint. I like that. I know some people might not like it, but I, I think it's fantastic. I love this. Looks great. Great job here, Gail. And then Deborah's version. Wow. Yeah, see, this is just what I was talking about, right? The, the transitions and we see those colors we see the artist mixing those paint really beautiful all right uh, this is great wow um what else can i say about these you guys did a really great job i, I was really like i feel really happy with the particularly with that george o'keefe painting i think it's the the results is going to speak for themselves Okay, I could go on for another four hours talking to get us right up to where we are. But again, when I just let me see, just looking at um, some of the so with Leonardo, we've got twelve people made that painting. The paint on the moon, there is four people that did that one. The Sherry Boyle, we've got eleven people did that one. Salvador Dali, we've got thirteen people did that one. The, the J.R.R. Tolkien Reading Day, we've got nine versions. The Cecilia Jimenez painting of uh, the Eke Mono, the monkey, Behold the Monkey painting, the, 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 the one we did for um, April Fools. There is only three people that did that one. Fra Angelica, Fra, Fra Angelico painting, the... Um, Touch Me Not painting we did for the Easter special. Only two people did that painting. It's a little bit more complicated painting, and maybe some people aren't into the um, religious background behind that painting, which is fair. Uh, I also personally think Fra Angelico was one of the greatest artists in human history, um, and while might be worth some people doing another, taking a look at that painting and trying to do that one. Yeah, Maria Shargill, we have six people did that one, and A.Y. Jackson, there's only two people that have uploaded images to the Facebook. So I think it is a kind of, maybe this is a good place to take a break, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue looking at more paintings in a few weeks from now, because it sometimes takes people a little bit of time to finish these paintings. So I would love to see some people tackling some of these, the more recent paintings we've done. Um, yeah. Some of these, yeah, these look cool. Yeah, so but anyway, you, you're like, I can't even, what is he talking about? I can't see these on the screen. <laughs> so, um, thank you everyone for joining me, for painting along with me. I love seeing your artwork. It makes me so excited 
to see, you know, every day, like, I, I've been sitting on the couch, on the computer, since about 10 o'clock this morning, downloading all of the pictures, pulling them off the web, and there, I'm sure there's probably some more that are on Instagram and Twitter and everything that I haven't even found yet. I think there might be a few people that send me emails with those images. It is definitely easier if they're all in one place, if they're all on the Facebook um, so going forward, really trying to put them there because it makes my life easier. But anyway, I spent like six hours putting all these images, which is, um, for me, time well spent. And for me, it makes me super excited that it, that there's so many people that are spending so much of their time making these paintings, painting along with me, that 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 I spend my day organizing all of those images because. You know, it just makes me feel like we're doing something of value and that this is important and interesting and people are getting something out of it. So I'm more than happy to spend my time um, in that way because um, it's super, super rewarding and life affirming and all that kind of stuff. So I, I really am super, super honored. Like it's, it, I, it, in a way is I can't quite make mental sense of the fact that there's all of these people many of whom I mean I would love to meet all of you but the, the likelihood is especially people that are on other continents in other countries that we may not ever meet person to face to face um, that you're honoring me so much by by you know sharing your time with me week after week after week after week so um, anyway, I'm just, I, all I, every time I turn on the camera and I speak out there into the, the void and the people are, are replying back to me and sharing me, it, uh, it just feels like, oh, this is maybe I'm doing something, uh, right and, and useful with my time. And hopefully you should also feel the same way that, you know, that's like this reciprocal relationship uh, that we're creating in this community that's formed and it's such a supportive community i love reading the comments i don't often have time to because i know as soon as i start typing in sometimes i do type in but i end up spending 20 30 minutes commenting on one and then i feel like other people are like how come he didn't write on mine so i kind of almost feel like i don't want to say anything because then then i open that uh nest or nest egg rabbit's egg and i just was eating a easter egg beforehand so um, anyway, uh, yes, we do, it would be great to do a Zoom chat, as Amy, um, puts in here. Uh, well, thank you so much, everyone. It's all these very beautiful comments here. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for joining me once more, uh, for sharing your images. If you found this helpful, the same old, same old that I say all the time is to like and subscribe to the channel. There's a few people I saw in the chat that I haven't seen before, so maybe they're just joining us for the first time and got excited and want to join in and paint along with us. So hit that so the little bell so you know when these videos are coming up. Like and, and join the Facebook group. All those links are down below. We will see you on Tuesday. When on Tuesday... Let me just load this up. Oh, we're doing the Robert Bateman. <laughs> We're going to do a Robert Bateman on Tuesday, which that's super exciting. Oh my goodness. He's been a really big mentor in my life. We're going to be painting one of his uh, paintings from uh, Bald Eagle from 1983, which is a, a draw or is a painting that I drew obsessively when I was a kid. I don't think I have any of those drawings here with me, but I, um, I have what vivid vivid memories of drawing this image over and over again and i'm super excited um to uh to do this painting oh man we got there's so many cool artworks coming up here i'm just scrolling through oh i've got the mother's day special lots of okay anyway let's all say all of that i'm going delirious getting a little bit hungry so we'll see you guys in a couple of days We'll continue this fabulous uh, journey that we're on, and I look forward to having you join me. So thank you so much, everyone. We will see you then, and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll talk to you very, very soon. Good night, everybody.